it really was a frustration trying to figure out what the dancing fields are. For example, let's suppose that there's a little speck of gold, uh, maybe even just a grain of flower gold, uh, one to two feet underground, and let's say we've got a uh, clay soil that's got a lot of iron in it. Well, the marker field coming up is going to dissipate because of the iron particularly, and it may come up as a, in, a, in an area about this big as this blue cloth here, and the marker field will be moving all over the place like this because it's reconstituting itself and it's flickering and and so the, the marker field is moving like that and if I'm looking for the gold I'm sending out a horizontal tracking field off my hand and that tracking field is on the marker field I mean it's hitting the vertical it's staying on the vertical but it's moving all over the place like this now I cannot see the vertical field or the horizontal field but I can pick them up with my pendulum so I've got this and right off my hand I can pick up the tracking field for gold we've got a good solid hit that we've got for gold but as I move away from my hand that field the horizontal tracking field is moving so I lose the signal and the signal gets weak and it's moving all over the place and I could try to go over the dancing field but that thing is you know trying to figure out how where to put the pendulum to stay on top of this thing is absolutely frustrating and I, I was <laughs> really having a difficult time with it and then one day I was in my shed and I had a, a bag of uh, Home Depot play sand and let's just imagine that this is the bag of Home Depot play sand and there was a speck of gold probably just flower gold somewhere around in this area of the bag and what I did is I stood the bag up and then I had a dancing field as the field was rising up it was dancing across the top of the bag and I thought well good I've got a captive dancing field I can analyze it better and it's going back and forth here and and it was a hot summer day uh, it was about five o'clock I was sweaty the mosquitoes were getting real thick I was inside the shed and my wife was calling me in for dinner and I'm getting absolutely nowhere trying to analyze this dancing field and I was so frustrated and so hot and so sweaty that I sighed and and, and kind of left my mouth open because I was just so hot I was like panting and as I was working with this field I thought well maybe I can I can uh, I can make this field uh, come to me like I've been doing able to do with a tracking field and I said come to me and the next thing I know it's dancing on this side of the bag only I thought what what in the world where why is it not dancing all over the place so I moved my pendulum back to see where the field was and it was coming right at me and it was going down my throat and that scared me because if you've ever seen the movie the exorcist or alien the last thing you want is strange things going down your throat so i swooshed the air and i turned my head aside <laughs> it's like <laughs> we're not gonna have any of that now i wasn't about to try that again until i figured out what in the world was going on now it got really curious because if i take uh, piece of cement like this and I'm tracking the organic tracking field that comes off of this and I command it to come to me it will actually come and hit my chest right here now this is also curious because the orb goes directly behind the shoulder blades right at this level so the orb goes behind this level here the organic tracking field that comes off of here will come to me here so I thought well is that what's happening is there something down my throat right at this level now anatomically speaking what is happening is the lungs come up and they join together right here at the base of the throat so that made me wonder what is going on now the lungs are a water-based organism organ so there's water involved here and there's air involved here at the base of the throat so I thought, well, let's, let's do some research on this. So the lungs are a water organ. Now, several scriptures came to my mind here. 
it says that God breathed into man, into his nostrils, the breath of life, the spirit. It also says that God made man in his own image. And in Genesis, it says that the spirit of God hovered and moved over the surface of the water. So it made me curious if the spirit that God breathed into man's nostrils hovers over the surface of the water that is contained in the lungs. So I took a cottage cheese container and I got some cellulose sponges, put them inside of it, and then soaked them down. And I found that I can use a turkey baster to keep them nice and wet. I found that if they start to dry out a little bit, it messes up the, uh, the effect of it. And then I took my pendulum and I actually went for the reading of spirit. And I got an energy reading that identifies as spirit. And it was curious because the field had a shape to it, has a shape to it. I'm going to stay right on the edge here. There's like a dome that goes over this. And it's about like that high up off the, uh, off the bowl. But that actually reads as spirit. So as a default, there is a spirit that hovers over the surface of the water that's contained in a simulated synthetic lung like this. But researching these, these, this effect, the spirit bowl, really got fascinating because, let me show you here, I'm going for the spirit reading, and it's right there, and over to the side, let's see how wide it is. About 10 inches from the center of the bowl. Let's see here. Same that way, about 10 inches from the center of the bowl. Now if I take another bowl, just like it, and set it down next to it, this thing, the height of it will reduce, and the width of it will go from 10 inches to 20 inches. If I set down a third bowl, it'll spin out to 30 inches. It appears that, it's, that it gets excited by the presence of other bowls, and there's like a centrifugal force to the to the spin of the spirit field because the scripture says that the spirit hovers, moves over the surface of the water. I discovered that there was a magnetic component to the spirit field. Now if you know about magnets, the history of them, it used to be that they would call this side the north pointing side and this the south pointing side because scientifically this is actually the south pole current that's flowing out of here that causes it to point to the north. So this is always the north pointing pole, which indicates that it's south pole current. But navigators didn't like having to use all those words, so they just kept calling this north and this south, which is great for navigation, but for science, this is actually the south pole, and this is the north pole. But the north seeking side of the magnet, this part here, blows like a wind against the spirit field that is over this. It will actually push it over this way. And I found it by testing it if I take a magnet and I put it this way so it pushes the field around here. It actually has a sickening feel to it, but if I turn it so it's like this, it actually feels much better. So I'm guessing that the rotational direction of the spirit field is counterclockwise. I also found that if I lift some of these, because I was curious about the centrifugal force and what's happening under the spirit field, because the spirit field actually, what I can read, sits above this. So I was curious what would happen if I, if I lifted some of these like this, and it actually felt okay. You can see here by raising these up that if you were to go from the center out, it would appear that it would throw things out in this direction. But now if I change it, I changed how these were laying, so now if you go from center out, 
instead of going clockwise, this goes counterclockwise, this feels sickening. Now, this is very curious because the spirit field sits on top of it. It appears that the spirit field is going counterclockwise, but yet if the center out causes this to go counterclockwise, it doesn't feel right. So I don't know if there's a different direction under there or if the actual center of the spirit field moves inward instead of outward. So that was really fascinating. And one of the strangest things that I discovered about these spirit fields is whatever is producing the spirit field appears to be in the spirit field and I find that whatever is in this spirit field affects the spirit field that's inside of me. Um, when I first put together one of these devices, I didn't use, I used just a regular cheap sponge that I got at Walmart and, and slapped the thing together and started feeling physically sick. And I thought, well, wait a minute, it must be the type of sponge. So I got these uh, natural cellulose sponges and rinsed them out real quick and, and slapped together. And still I started feeling sick. And so then I went and took and I washed these. First I washed them out with organic dish soap. And then I thought, now let's even do better than that. So I sent them through the laundry. And we use all organic stuff. And no bounce, no harsh chemicals, nothing toxic. I sent them through the laundry to make sure that they were clean. Put it together and that felt right. Now, but if these sponges started to dry out, and that's why I use the turkey baster to keep them wet, if they started to dry out, there was that sickening feeling again. Or if the water didn't get changed out enough, if it started to get stagnant, and I like to change it out once, twice a day, then it would start to feel sickening again. I would actually feel physically sick from the, the, what, it, what was happening in here. Really strange. I also discovered that if I took a stainless steel bowl, and this is just a dollar bowl that I got at the dollar store, I don't know if it's for a water dish for dogs and cats or, or what it's for, but it only costs a dollar. But if you take a paper towel, and paper towels have got some nasties in them, so I like to take and rinse them out. And let's take this paper towel and come on, come on, come on. More fingers here. Gonna set that down inside this bowl. There we go. And let me straighten out the edges here so it's not hanging over the edge. There, I have the paper towel. We rinsed it out in here and I did ion test this. There is yucks, bad stuff in there that we got out of the paper towels. And this device here also needs to be rinsed out once, twice a day. Paper towels themselves can last several days, but the paper towels have got a, an ability to wick the water even better than the sponges. So it's actually a lot easier to work with than the sponges and a lot cheaper to work with. But if I take this, the thing that is fascinating is because this stainless steel bowl is electrically conductive, strange phenomenon occurs. I'm going to take this device here and I'm going to say, come to me. it goes into the bowl. Instead of coming to my chest, it goes into the bowl. And if I do the same with the marker field, there's a penny right there. Come to me. And I've got my mouth shut, so I'm not interfering with it. It's going right to this bowl. So for the organic tracking field and for the marker field, they're identifying this bowl now is me. And that is a mind bender. What am I? Na uh, the uh, organic fields pick me up as this 
water field. The marker fields, the spirit fields pick me up as this water field, this thing hovering over, over the water. But what conducts it into the bowl? If I use the plastic bowl and try to do the same thing, I do not get the same results. I cannot, this will not become me, which uh, the uh, ion fields that I use off my fingers go six inches, so I should if it's the ion field that's causing the effect that me holding it pr pretty much like this should cause the thing to, to occur here, but it doesn't. So whatever is causing this sense of me to go into this bowl is not the ion field at all. It's something else. And perhaps it's the, the water in the body that causes a crystalline effect. But this is really fascinating. Oh, and by the way, change the paper towels out once, twice a week. Change the water out once, twice a day. And I like to keep about, oh, about a half inch of water in the bottom of this thing. But I was curious about if my spirit is now in here to uh, see if I could pray and meditate through this. And I found that I can. And it's fascinating because there's more sense, more of a sense of peace and joy and faith when I'm using this. And part of the reason is that way it avoids my mind, it avoids my doubts, it avoids my my OCD, my my uh, ADD, my dyslexia, it avoids all that stuff. And I find a lot more faith and joy and peace when I'm holding this thing. And oftentimes I'll lay down and I can fall asleep better if I'm holding on to this. And when I'm in bed, and of course, oftentimes I spill it in the mattress at night, but it's water, you know, the worst somebody could think that I peed the bed, but whatever, it's not gonna hurt anything. But as an experiment, try this. Get yourself a stainless steel bowl and rinse out a paper towel, put it in there and hold on to it and see what you experience. I, I, I love the thing.